This example says if f of 1 is 10 and f prime of x is greater than or equal to 2 for every x between 1 and 4, how small can f of 4 possibly be? With these types of exercises, and really with any exercise in math, it's helpful to sketch a diagram when you can. So let's see if that helps. So we're given a function and told that f of 1 is 10, which we'll say is about here. It's just a rough sketch, right? And we're investigating the range between 1 and 4 here on the x-axis. Um, and what it tells us is for all the points in between there, the derivative is always greater than or equal to 2. So I don't know what's going on here, but it's, it's definitely going up. 2 is pretty steep. So we can imagine this going something up like so for 4. Right, maybe maybe it goes up like this, you know, uh, maybe it goes up like this. I don't know how it gets there, but that derivative is always greater than or equal to 2, and that's pretty steep. So it looks like we're going to use the mean value theorem here. So for the mean value theorem to work, we need to show that it meets these conditions. So we have if f is continuous on 1 to 4 in our case. Well, I don't know. It doesn't say much about it being continuous up here, but it does says that it does say that this derivative exists and is greater than or equal to 2. Recall that when we first talked about differentiability, there was a theorem that says if a function is differentiable, then it is continuous. So for this derivative to exist and be greater than or equal to 2 for every x between 1 and 4, we can say that it's differentiable and thus continuous. So we can check off the conditions for the mean value theorem. Let's look at the conclusion of the mean value theorem down here, f of b minus f of a over b minus a. In the context of this particular example, our a is 1 and our b is 4. So we have f of b minus f of a all over b minus a is equal to, okay, so that's really f of 4 minus f of 1 all over 4 minus 1. Okay, so that's progress, because this is what we're trying to solve for. Let's look at the minimum case. Okay, the minimum that this can possibly be is 2. Because if it were any smaller, we'd be able to find some point, right, some point C in that interval such that the derivative would be equal to that smaller slope. And we know from the original problem that all of these derivatives, the derivative everywhere in here is greater than or equal to 2. So this secant line can never be less than 2. So let's just examine the minimum possible case where it equals 2. So this gives us 2 equals f of 4 minus, well, we know f of 1 is 10. That's given over 3. And now we can simply solve for f of 4. Multiply up. By 3, 6 equals f of 4 minus 10, and so f of 4 must be 16 at a minimum. It might be bigger than that, but the smallest it can possibly be is 16. Any smaller, and we're going to have a derivative somewhere in there that is less than 2, which the original problem states can't happen.